The Xbox Series X is out across the global market with more than 1 million consoles already in the hands of gamers playing the latest games, testing out their favorites thanks to strong backward compatibility support, and anxiously awaiting the next big batch of games to kick off in a full year of uncertainty and game delays. For Xbox gamers that bought into the hope that the Xbox Series X would be the most powerful console in the world, many multi-platform games have been outperformed by the PlayStation 5. One game, which is arguably one of the biggest games of 2020, if not the decade, is about to show the world what powerful hardware mixed with the right touch can do to make the Xbox Series X one of the best places to play. This is Colt Eastwood, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great week and I hope you're getting the time to sit down and enjoy your games. Huge thanks to today's sponsor, Display. Special one-of-a-kind metal posters, large and small, that truly help you showcase your passions and personality in a big way. Display shipped me three big posters I chose to show my love of PlayStation, Xbox, and YouTube. These matte metal posters are easy to hang anywhere without mounting brackets, drilling holes, or any tools required. You simply peel the mounting pad, place it on the wall, add the strong magnet, pressing for five seconds, then place the poster to the magnets, and you can make adjustments to get them just where you want. The posters look great and 40,000 artists across the internet are adding everything you can think of to express what you love. Anime, movies, TV, music, cars, gaming, or if you love to design like me, create your own to share with the world. They have thousands of designs available in medium, large, and extra large. I have chosen a few of my favorite displays for you guys. You can check them out by clicking on my link. You can use the 28% discount code. It'll be activated once you click on the link and add your displays to the cart. This discount doesn't last forever, so don't miss your chance to get your disc plates in your room. Last week, I had the privilege to sit and talk to a developer and major lead for Xbox and gain some valuable insight in how games are built and how they will continue to improve on the Xbox Series consoles going forward. I'll do my best to illustrate and explain that here, so stay to the end. I've got an apology and explanation that is worth waiting for. If you end up enjoying this video and learn a few things, show your appreciation by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified of new content. Change your player to 4K60 if you can, or at least set it to 60fps, as it will be important to the presentation. Alright, now let's get into this discussion. On December 10th, just days from now, the world will finally get hands-on with Cyberpunk 2077, a game that has been in the hearts and minds of gaming fans for well over eight years. Shown as far back with a full trailer in 2017, gameplay trailers, and every rumor imaginable has weighed down the game that has seen a couple of delays, the hype couldn't get any bigger, and the anticipation couldn't be any stronger. This is probably the biggest game of the year and expectations are high for Cyberpunk 2077 to be a watermark and a hallmark of what a next generation game can be on the latest hardware on PC and brand new consoles in the PS5 and Xbox Series X. The PS5 is unabashedly bested the most powerful Xbox Series X in almost every comparison with next generation games over the first month of the console launch. Many expect the same result for Cyberpunk 2077 as tech sites dig into the pixel arrays and frame time counters in the PS5 in head-to-head -head with the Xbox. What many do not expect is that even though Cyberpunk is releasing on the month anniversary of the console launch, Cyberpunk 2077 is not actually a next-generation game. Not really at any capacity. Set to release in 2020 amidst the global stay-at-home initiative, Cyberpunk remains a Generation 8 game. In other words, at launch, it is still an Xbox One, PS4, and PC title. That's not a bad thing, no matter how you look at it, as games over the past decade have been mostly x86 architecture titles. This means that since the Xbox One and PS4, even on the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro, right into next generation PS5 and Xbox Series X. These games are all using the same architecture, compatible with each other, and most importantly, PC. Cyberpunk 2077 is a Gen 8 version on the PS5 and Xbox Series X, which means it will be running the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X versions of the game on new consoles. All official footage shown by CD Projekt Red up to this point has been displaying at 30 FPS, even on PC. I have interpolated the footage in post-production to show it at 60 FPS. 
According to my sources, the game is shipping this week with a performance mode, allowing the PS5 and Xbox Series console owners to choose to prioritize frame rate over visuals. Of course, this also means if you're still on the PS4 Pro or Xbox One X, you'll be able to use the performance mode. A developer explained to me that Cyberpunk is ported on the XDK Gen Durango, the Xbox One X Generation 8 development kit, but is quote, Generation 9 console type aware, which means that it will be ready for a full Xbox Series port process next year. For anyone paying close attention to comparisons over the past three years, with the Xbox One X outperforming the PS4 Pro on most every game, you can estimate how the release version of Cyberpunk 2077 will compare with the Xbox Series X versus the PS5. There is a major benefit right now with the PS5 games being developed on a dev kit which is largely like the PS4 dev kit, and that translates to optimization. Right now, the PS5 is getting nearly all of the most important optimization from the box in multiplat games as developers have had well over six months more time and familiarity with the kits than they have with the Xbox Series X and new features and drivers not fully implemented or available yet, even on PC. A developer explained that the XDK for the Xbox that was used to port Xbox One era games is being used to launch Cyberpunk 2077. The GDK, the dev kit specifically for Xbox Series X and PC going forward, is not being used to build the Xbox version of Cyberpunk 2077. Not yet. He said, The XDK has new special APIs that enable you to have a game specifically compiled only for Xbox One to know if it's running on Xbox One S, One X, Xbox Series S, or Xbox Series X, and make decisions based on that. I can say for certain that the XDK is more mature than the GDK and it's similar to how you get a brand new GPU at release and there are tons of bugs and performance isn't fantastic." Close quote. There are drivers from AMD that are specific to RDNA 2 which are also paramount to the performance and features built into brand new AMD desktop GPUs and Xbox Series S and X. These drivers are not ready, mature, or updated to take full advantage of the new Xbox. Luckily for those too impatient to wait for 2021 for a next generation patch for Cyberpunk, those ready to play on Xbox from launch date will likely get the best console version if they play on Xbox Series X. Microsoft as well as I have made these claims before and so far has not panned out for the world's most powerful console, but Cyberpunk on the Xbox Series X has one ace in the hole and is the last world's most powerful console, the 2017 Xbox One X. The developer says of the early release version of Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is running under back and pat, 3.8 gigahertz, eight cores, eight threads, CPU, 12 teraflop GCN 4.5 GPU at 560 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. So this is less of a true next gen experience and more so a stopgap solution to improve the experience on next gen while CD Projekt Red are working on the Gen 9 native version with all of the delays and how easy it is to implement Gen 9 aware, CD Projekt Red probably figured they could just add those Suedo next generation enhancements without much effort at all. Amongst the technical explanation is simply said backward compatibility on Xbox Series X is more advantageous in multiplats than the PS5. The raw power and performance of the Xbox Series X is not limited by optimization barriers with a new kit and drivers not readied for the console. The Xbox Series X is running the back and pat version of the game using the full clock speed of the CPU, which is more than the PS5. The game is running with eight cores and eight threads conventionally, which is easier on CD Projekt Red and the last generation GPU setup with the power of the Xbox Series X. This means that Cyberpunk 2077 will likely run at a dynamic 1440p60 with expected frame drops, where the PS5 could see a mean average resolution of closer to 1080p in performance mode. This is good for those that chose to play on Xbox with a sharper presentation and less frequent frame dips as long as CD Projekt Red does not push the resolution too aggressively on the Xbox. Recently, Microsoft had reported that they had sent their advanced technology group to CD Projekt Red to facilitate the porting process onto the Xbox One and Xbox Series consoles. This team is embedded or involved with most studios around the world, assisting in utilizing the tools and software that take advantage of the power in the Xbox One X and Series consoles. 
One of the leads for Xbox explained that not every game is developed on just a PC. Some are developed on a PlayStation kit and ported to the Xbox and vice versa. For Cyberpunk, the Advanced Technology Group is working closely to make sure that the game launches with the available performance and power afforded by the Xbox backward compatibility solution. Right now in the opening months of the new consoles, all of the games we have seen this far have been true cross-generation games. Even looking into 2021, not many of these games are made without Xbox One and PS4 in mind. Xbox and PlayStation have both stated that they will continue to support the Xbox One and PS4 for the first year or two. The problem with this approach is not holding back but encouraging developers to port to seven different platforms with Xbox One, Xbox One X, Series S and X, PS4, PS4 Pro, and PS5, while also porting to a myriad of configurations on PC. Hearing behind the scenes that Cyberpunk 2077 is a gorgeous full-fledged RPG with ambitions that deliver, but the experience on console and even PC will be imperfect. Those that have followed the work of CD Projekt Red know that the game will get full support and will only become more of a masterpiece as the team works toward a full Generation 9 Xbox Series X, S, and PS5 patch to bring in DirectX ray tracing, higher quality settings across the game world, and faster, more stable performance. All of this crafted within a talented development team, powerful performance consoles, and well-requested 60fps mode, Cyberpunk 2077 may be the true next-generation game we've been waiting to showcase on the PS5 and Xbox Series X, and it still won't be a true next-generation update until 2021. This is Colt Eastwood. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far and it was a long video, please write in the comments, Loki. It's been a crazy year covering this next generation content and for me quite a roller coaster and I've made some bold claims about the Xbox Series X and seen most of them lately not come true. I want to apologize to any that may have bought an Xbox Series X on my recommendation, but I am hearing that nearly everyone is loving the new Xbox regardless. I made a video a couple of weeks ago and I will link that at the end here where I claim that DirectML and full RDNA 2 will push the Xbox Series X far beyond the PS5's performance. I got dragged pretty hard for those claims that come directly from Jensen Huang of NVIDIA and other developers working on the new console. A week after that, I was told by someone very high up in Xbox that DirectML and VRS are major key factors in performance advantages for Xbox once the developers have started using them on PC and Xbox Series consoles. I also claim that Xbox gamers are essentially getting PS5 ports of Xbox games and that upset a lot of fanatics on the PlayStation side that didn't understand that I meant resolution and frame rate targets. Turns out that he explained to me that some games are indeed built for the PlayStation and ported to PC and Xbox. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll start to understand that I usually only report on information that I trust or hear from those that ask to be unnamed. I don't let information that misses the mark bother me, but I do try to do better. Generalize things that are not definitive and do my best to give you a great presentation with integrity. If you end up enjoying this video, let me know by subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Add me on Xbox Live and Twitter at Colt Eastwood. Supporters that want more early access to videos and monthly giveaways can join the channel membership to get custom badges in the comment section and Patreons get early access and giveaways as well. But I'd love to hear what you think about Cyberpunk 2077 and what you expect to see in comparisons next week. Tell me where you're playing the game and as always, please be nice.